Hey ladies and gents, what's going on? BQ here. I know I'm a couple days late on this, but due to popular demand, I'm uh, gonna talk a little bit about the Tyrus situation. And uh, if it's your first time here on the channel and you're a Global Force Wrestling fan and like talking with Global Force Wrestling fans and like hearing from a Global Force Wrestling fan, then know that this channel brings the heat. So please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it very much. I don't have a whole hell of a lot to say about this Tyra situation. I talked about it a few days ago when he uh, requested his release and pulled the Kaepernick and everything, and it didn't work out for him. I think that tagging on Instagram Matt Hardy and um, who else? Helms and uh, I think there's one or two others in there. Not super popular with the company at the moment. So tagging those guys, I didn't think was going to work out very well in his benefit. Now, when he dropped the video online, you know, I got the feeling that, yeah, he was kind of unhappy, but was probably willing to sit down and talk. And I don't think the, I think the company's taken a strong stance on, okay, if you're going to be a butt, we're going to handle you the way we see fit. Do I think, I said this previously, should he have been in the Slammiversary match instead of Chris Adonis? Absolutely, freaking lootly Chris Adonis can't draw a penny and Tyrus has, you know, you, I guess you could call it celebrity status. I think he does a very good job on Fox News. I, I watch Fox News, so, you know, when, when you guys tweet at me with, like, oh, he sold his soul, I watch Fox News, so calm yourself. Anyway, he does a really good job on there. And he's got great mic skills. So is there something you could have done with him and could have you could you have utilized him better? Absolutely. But if we're in the driver's seat, we're the bookers, and someone comes to you and says, okay, impact this Thursday. What are you going to do with Tyrus to make him a main event player like he thinks he is? All right, what what uh, interesting angle do you have for Tyrus this Thursday that's going to get him over? Do you really think you could come up with something? I mean, okay, he's got mic skills. Could have used them for Slammiversary. I get it. Probably could have done something better than the hired... Because the hired gun thing... It worked with EC3, it worked with Matt Hardy, and then it was done. And then they continued to try to do it with Eli Drake and Bruce Pritchard. Like, it had already, it had already, like, the moment had passed, people. So, it worked with Matt Hardy really well, especially when he was, like, the big babysitter. And he's carrying Maxwell, and Maxwell was real little. Because that was actually hilarious. But... After that, I think what they should have done, could have done, it wouldn't have been big, but it would have given him something to do. I thought he, when they got away from the Hardy angle that he should have teamed with uh, Rockstar Spud. They should have been a tag team. I mean, the dynamic with Little Spud and Big Tyrus was, I, I mean, I thought it was kind of cool. They, tag, they tagged up once back when the division was super shallow and they needed to come up with number one contenders for Decay at Slammiversary. You know, it was like a huge huge stretch and they had those two against the bromans and the bromans won obviously because they went on to slam anniversary but i think they could have at least had a serviceable serviceable heel tag team i me personally if you're asking what would you have done with tyrus i would have teamed him teamed him with congo kong it looked like they were trying to do an angle against each other i would have teamed them together not saying they would have won the titles or been a classic tag team but we haven't had a big twin towers tag team in wrestling and forever not of that size and i didn't know tyrus was as big as kong so that's what i would have done but again if, if you're come to me with a gun in my head be like make tyrus popular and relevant you know it probably would have been fairly difficult he's not the main event guy he thinks he is and if you go to management and say i'm i deserve to be at the top of the card then like like magnus okay well buy because you're not that's not where you necessarily belong and if you if you go to work like a good soldier no one's been screwed over more than eli drake has and do you see him oh uh, i'm taking a knee i'm doing this and he's still all about the company and it's always been all about the company because things go on behind the curtains that we don't even know about and i'm sure he was just waiting his turn so someone like Tyrus to step forward and be like, oh, I'm taking a knee. I could be used better. There's people way ahead of the line of you, buddy. So with this new Anthem, Global Force Management, it's been one thing's been very made very clear to me. They're not putting up with BS. And there's a lot of wrestlers who obviously, and I kind of put the Hardys in that category, 
who are walking all over Dixie and getting whatever they wanted. And now all of a sudden, some people are coming down, putting their foot down. It's not going to be like that here. And they head for the hills. And of course, it reflects negatively on the company. Like, people are leaving. Oh, my God. When, you know, the people that are leaving the company, aside from maybe the Hardys, I, I, I highly doubt Anthem and the GFW management were on the other side of the table, like, begging them to stay. All right. Galloway, I can imagine they probably probably really wanted him to stay. I'm never going to call him Drew McIntyre. Drew Galloway. I would imagine they wanted him to stay because he was a champion Champion at the time. He was a title holder, and it seemed like they were going to put the title on him instead of El Patron when he came in. I think the I heard, many, many of you probably heard the same, that the creative was to put on Galloway that night instead. I don't know how they would have done that because he was a heel and Lashley was a heel, but, you know, go figure. Um... And then they try to put, you know, Bully Ray in that category. So, obviously, that Galloway position was an important one. And I think the Hardys they wanted to keep, too. Because, I mean, they didn't... For everything we complain about what they did to the product in a negative manner, which the, you know, Dirt Sheets and all them don't really talk about, they did a lot of good for the company, too. And they were pretty good soldiers while they were there. So, I think we wanted to keep them. But think of all the other people who left. Okay, Aaron Rex... I liked him. His first night of the company, he was poised to be a star, and they completely mismanaged him by having him do the WWE thing, and or not the WWE thing, but do the TNA thing and put the title on him right away. He had a grand championship, which didn't fit his style of wrestling. Ruined him. Off the bat, you know, the new management came in and said, okay, you were a Dixie hire because you were ex-WWE? Gone. Brandy, as much as Brandy wants to put a spin on it, it was obvious on TV they had no plans for her when they got there. I'm pretty sure they looked at her at the same way. All right, you were a former WWE person who adds nothing to the program. Gone. These people don't have any kind of leverage. Magnus thought he had some leverage, thinks he's a main event guy. If you watch the GFW One Night Onlys, compare that Magnus to this, this Magnus. He showed up incredibly out of shape for his standards at these tapings, and he wanted to be the man. No, sir. Uh, you know, Matt Morgan, it's whatever. He put a spin on it, which I think is uh, ridiculous because just because they taped, uh, you know, some shows during the week and that wasn't the plan, he said, I can't be here. So people make some some excuses, but, I mean, look at all these people. These aren't huge losses. They're really not, you know. I don't even view the Hardys and Galloway as huge losses now in retrospect because who they've added since then. So I'd rather, I'd rather have Johnny, uh, Johnny impact than Galloway personally. And losing the Hardys was the best thing that could have happened to the tag division. Cause look at him now. So, but, but with Tyrus, you know, I, um, I don't want to drag on too long here. He wasn't really adding anything. I'm not saying I dislike them. I didn't necessarily like him either. You know, he was there and, Big guys like that are hard to book in wrestling right now. And they didn't do him any favors by continuing the bodyguard gimmick till the point where it was just watered down. But um, not a main event guy. When he won Bound for Gold, he couldn't cash in because he was with e uh, EC3 and then he was with Hardy and he couldn't cash in against his bosses. So he finally cashed in against Hardaway and that match opened Impact. It wasn't even... The, they couldn't even make it the main event because it, it wasn't a draw like... <laughs> Tyrus versus Drew. So it was the opening match. When was the last time on Impact? The opening match has been the world title match. Just that one. You know, so um, that's it. Leave your comments about Tyrus or uh, people leaving in general. You know, it's whatever. You don't want you don't want to play the game. There's plenty of people who do. So talk to you guys soon. This is BQ and I'm out.